use it for his glory. Well, the Bible says that this boy who was fatherless, that he began to do what was right. And so at 12, he began to tear stuff down he knew shouldn't have been there. There are certain things he knew just wasn't right. There are certain things we know that's not right, so we need to get rid of it, you see. Nobody have to tell us. We know it. So he started to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high place, the wooden images, the carved images, and the molded images. He broke down the altars to Baal. He burned up the altars. He burned all the incense. He took the graves of the priests, and he burned them up. He was showing people through some dramatic acts, and we're making a clean break with Baal worship. And we're going to worship Jehovah, the true and the living God. He broke down all the altars in verse 7. In the 18th year of his reign, when he was 26, he said, man, we need to go to church. <laughs> He's been tearing stuff down. He done tore everything, just by tore everything down in the land because everything had been erected to reflect Baal worship. And then he began to realize, you know what, we need to go to church. And the whole temple was in just disarray. There hadn't been worship in the temple for years. And so he sends Shaphan and he sends Hilkiah the priest. He said, y'all go and y'all clean up the church house. We got to have some church up in here. So he sends them and they go in and they're trying to collect some money to buy some two befores and buy some block and some stuff to clean the place up. And while they're in there stirring around trying to clean the place up, they come across an old book. Didn't even know what it was. <laughs> They came across this old book. It was the book of the law. It was the word of God. The word of God had been shut. It had been closed. It had been lost in the temple. And so the whole nation was in spiritual disarray because they had no spiritual moral compass to direct them. So they find the old book. And Shaphan takes it to Hilkiah, and Hilkiah the priest, well, he knew enough that he should have known that this was the book. And he said, you go take this to the king. <laughs> So Shaphan, the, 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 the scribe, he, he brings the book. He said, King, we were doing what you told us to do. We were just minding our own business, trying to clean out the temple. And we came across this old book. And he started to read out the book. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy might. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. Don't covet your neighbor's ox. Don't covet nothing belongs to your neighbor. And the king began to realize this is the word of God. This is what's been missing from our attempts to restore and to revitalize the land. I didn't have the book. And the Bible says the king, he rends his robe. He ties his royal tie. Can you imagine what it'd be like on CNN, on C-SPAN, on ABC, NBC, MSNBC. What it would be like if President Barack Obama would stand up and just rent one of them tailor-made suits he's wearing. Just rent it and say, we've sinned before God. That's why we can't plug up the oil hole. We sinned before God. That's why we can't fix the economy. We sinned before God. That's why we can't get the health care thing right. We just sinned before God for so long, we're headed down this abyss, a slippery slope to chaos and confusion. The only thing going to help us is we turn back to God. Can you imagine what that would be like? Well, that's what it was like here. And all he could do was, you got to go see the man of God. Go see the woman of God. Because I don't know what to do. I'm just a king. I don't know what to do. And so Shaphan the scribe and Hilkiah, they went to see the priestess. And I'll tell you shortly basically what she told them. She basically told them the same thing that Belshazzar saw when he was throwing that big party in Persia. And they went into the treasury and took out the gold utensils that had been used to worship God in Israel. The Nebuchadnezzar stole when he plowed the land, and they were having a drunken orgy and drinking their wine and their liquor out of those holy vessels that were dedicated to God, and an unwritten hand came out of nowhere and wrote something on the wall. Meany, meany, tickle you farsons. Meany, meany, tickle you farsons. And nobody could interpret it. They brought the prophet in, the prophet said, oh, king, you in trouble. You in trouble. What it means is wave, wave, divided. 
You have been weighed in God's balances. God has weighed you. God has judged you. And tonight, your kingdom is going to be divided. And right outside of the wall, the Medes and the Persians were coming in to invade Babylon, to destroy it, and Babylon was no more. And so what the priest or the prophet is told, you tell the king, he's in trouble. The whole nation is in trouble because God is angry. He's been angry for a long time. And God is going to judge the land. And God's going to level Jerusalem. And won't a thing be left. But there's one little caveat. There's one little caveat. He said, but you also tell the king this. Tell him because he humbled himself. Tell him because he repented before God. And tell him because he sought the God of his father David that God would not allow his eyes to see it. God would not allow his eyes to see it that under his reign, under his rule, under his leadership, the nation will continue to prosper and to grow. And it won't be until after he dies will God bring the judgment. Well, I believe that God's judgment has already started against this nation. That's just my personal belief. His judgment has already started against us. We just broke down everywhere. We can't fix nothing. We just moved to something else, even though we haven't fixed the first thing yet. We just frustrate about everything. We can't fix the education system. We can't fix the health care system. We can't fix the economy. Now we, go, we can't fix the environment. We don't know to cap it and to trade it. We don't know what to do with it. And so everything is just out of control. And now the entire European Union's economy is spinning out of control, and all those economies based on the Euros, Greece, Spain, they don't know what to do with their economy. Now the Chinese, they threatening to call in all this debt that we owe to them. What are we going to do? We better crowd to God. We better crowd to God. And I say to the men who call themselves men of God, now it's time for us to be the men of God. Turn our face like flints and cry out to the Lord, Lord, have mercy on us. We have sinned. We have been irresponsible. We haven't been as diligent as we should have been. We haven't sacrificed the way we should have sacrificed. We haven't served the way we should have served. We haven't always had the right priorities. We confess our sins to you, Lord, and help us, help us, help us. Help us to be better men, better husbands, and better fathers. Don't you know if we don't turn this thing around, and I've shared this with you before, let me tell you what I believe the instrument of judgment is going to be against this nation. I believe that the instrument of judgment against this nation, it's not going to be Al-Qaeda. It's not going to be the Taliban. It's not going to be some foreign invasion. It's going to be the very children that we created. 